Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to create a pre-market scanner in the Thinkorswim platform. Now, if you guys have watched any of my past scanner videos, you know how powerful the scanner is in the TOS platform. You guys can pretty much scan for whatever it is that's important to you, whether it be based on technical indicators, fundamentals, or even patterns that appear on the chart. But in today's video, we're gonna be looking for stocks that have been running in the pre-market and hopefully find some stocks that are breaking out today. Now I will say, I'm just gonna be creating a basic template in this video, but you guys can always add upon it later on and get it set up in a way that makes more sense for you. But jumping right into it, obviously we need to come up here to the scan tab, the very fourth tab at the top. Once you've got the scan tab opened up, we obviously wanna make sure we've got the stock hacker selected. From there, you're gonna see a page that looks a whole lot like this. And breaking it out up here at the top, first off, you're gonna see three separate tabs, scan in all stocks, intersect with none, and exclude none. Now these tabs almost act as filters themselves, but we're gonna get to that a little bit later in the video. Right below that, you're also gonna see three little tabs here, net change, volume, and percent change. These are three of our default filters that get added. We are gonna be adjusting these ones, but if you ever need to add additional filters, you simply come up here to add a filter. In that drop-down menu, you can see all of the different filter options that are available, stock, option, fundamentals, and all you have to do is click on it and then find the thing that you wanna use. In our case, we're gonna use a couple of these defaults right off the bat. So right up here where it says stock net change, we're gonna go ahead and click on that. From there in this drop down menu, I want you to find the word mark. And we're using mark because that's gonna be the displayed price in the after hours. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. In this first example, we just wanna put the minimum price as let's say five bucks, since we don't wanna trade anything less than five bucks. And we'll go ahead and switch the maximum to, let's just put 500 in this example. Now, if any of you guys watching this video trade penny stocks or over-the-counter stocks, you can always change this price up here at the top to a lower value if you want to. But for this example, we're just putting minimum of five, maximum of $500 a share. Right below that, we've got a volume filter and we will put something in here. Let's just put, um, just to keep it small since it is the pre-market, we'll put 5,000 in here. Right below that, we've got the percent change filter. But remember, since this is gonna be working in the pre-market, this is not gonna work for us. So what I'm gonna instead do is go ahead and click on this and we're gonna instead use, let's say market cap, since I don't wanna trade any super tiny companies. In my case, I'm gonna flip this over to a minimum of 500, which means I don't wanna trade any companies that trade for less than $500 million in value. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and add some additional filters. So come on up here to add a filter. In this case, we're gonna be adding a study filter. Once we click on that, you're gonna see the default study filter that comes up is ADX crossover, which is definitely not the one we're gonna be using. So go ahead and click on that. From there, we're gonna come down to price performance. And if you look to the right of price performance, you're gonna see a few different filters. After hours percent change, gap down, gap up, gap within time. And there probably are a few that you guys would find useful in here. But in our case, we're gonna click on the one that says after hours percent change. Cause really we're just looking for big movers in the pre-market. Now, right off the bat, it says the after hours percent change, the closing value has moved greater than 1% in after hours trading. Now you could leave this as the default, but in our case, let's say we wanted to look for companies that have moved up at least 2% in the pre-market. So we're gonna go ahead and change that from one to two. Moving to the right, you're obviously gonna leave this check marked as extended, and we are gonna leave it as the one minute aggregation. And this is really it for the basic template that we're gonna be using in today's video. We're looking for companies that trade between five and 500, traded at least 5,000 shares today, are worth at least $500 million, and have moved up at least 2% in the pre-market. So now if we were to come down here to the scan tab and go ahead and click on it, let's see what kind of results pop up. Looking down below a little bit, we can see we've got 229 results right now that meet all of our criteria. Now, in order to filter out these companies a little bit, because at the moment it's just an alphabetical order, who knows which one of these we actually wanna trade, which ones have moved the most in the pre-market, we really need to tweak these column headers up here at the top right now, because at the moment, net change, percent change, and last are basically telling us nothing about these underlyings. So let's come over here to the right-hand side and click on this little gear icon. We're then gonna go to customize, because we're gonna customize these column headers. Now, the first thing we need to do is find the comparable uh, columns to these, last net change and percent change, but those that will actually work in the pre and post market. The very first one we're gonna add to replace last is gonna be mark. So go ahead and type in mark in here. From there, we'll go ahead and click on it, add item, and we'll see it down here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move it up right below last. The next one we're gonna add is actually gonna be mark change, and that's right next to net change. So let's go ahead and drag that and put it right below net change. And then finally, the last one we're gonna add is gonna be percent change, which is right here, or excuse me, mark percent change. Now that I've got that, I'm actually just gonna remove those other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and remove percent change, we're gonna go ahead and remove net change, and I'm gonna remove last right now, since we don't need it. 
Now that we've got the main columns that we want to add, let's go ahead and hit OK here. And now you can see my new columns have been added up here at the top. Let's go ahead and move those. And now that I've got them spaced correctly, I could also arrange it by these column headers. So let's say I wanted to see the biggest movers first. Let's just go ahead and click on the column Mark Percent Change and click on it one more time to arrange it from biggest to smallest. So right now we can see the biggest mover in the pre-market is Arch, Arch Resources. At the moment, you can see they are up $11 in the pre-market, which is just shy of 10%. Right below that, you can also see Annette is up $10, and that's just shy of 9%, 5%, 5%. So these are the really big movers in the pre-market session. Now, another important metric that a lot of traders like to look at is the volume in the pre-market. So they want to know if that volume was unusually high or unusually low for this underlying right now. Now, in Thinkorswim's case, I don't believe they've got relative volume preloaded into the platform, but if you guys want to load it in here yourself, and remember, relative volume is simply a way to gauge is volume high or low right now for this underlying. So if you want to see that, I'm going to include the script for it down below in the description section or in the comment section, but if you look over here on the right, that's what this column is right now. If I move my mouse away from it, you could see that the relative volume for Arch is 1.24, which means it's trading 1.24 times its average for the past 20 days. If we look down below that, Arista Networks, they're trading twice as much as their 20-day average, so the volume is pretty high for these two guys right now. But this could just be another helpful column if you guys want to have additional details in here. And again, like I said, I'll put the script down below in the comment section. Now, I think the last thing I'll mention in this video is how you guys can save this and then use it as a watch list on the side panel. So to do that, all you have to do is come up here to the three little lines in the middle. Go ahead and click on that. From there, we're going to come down here to Save Scan Query. And we're going to go ahead and give it a name, Pre-Market Test, just so I have this one identified. So Pre-Market Test. We're then going to go ahead and hit Save. And now from now on, we can open it up as a watch list on our side panel. So we're going to come over here to the side and click on My Watch List, Currently Marked Options. From there, we're then going to come up to Personal at the very top, and we're going to click on the scanner I just made, Pre-Market Test. As soon as we open that up, these are all the underlines that matched our criteria. And the really cool thing about this watch list is it's constantly updating. So every three to four minutes, it's like you're hitting the Scan tab. Any new companies that match our criteria will show up in this list. Any companies that no longer meet our criteria will fall off this list. So like I said, I am a huge fan of these scanners in Thinkorswim. You can scan for practically anything. This is just a very simple template to find pre-market movers. But I really hope this video helps. I know there's a lot of customization out there and near limitless things you guys can scan for, but this should really get you off to a good start to creating some scans yourself. If there's anything else you guys have questions on, feel free to leave it down below, but also be sure to check out some of my other tutorial videos on Thinkorswim. There's even some other tutorial videos on creating custom scans, so be sure to check those out if you want to learn more about this scan tab. But we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.